So welcome everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce to you again, uh, Professor Ivo Białyński Birula, who is actually one of the co-founder of our institute. And because of that, he's working in a center for theoretical physics from the very beginning. He's also a full member of the Polish Academy of Sciences, a foreign member of the Royal Norwegian Academy of Sciences and Letters, and national corresponding member of the Polish Academy of Arts and Science. Uh, he was awarded uh, so-called Polish Nobel Prize, given by the Foundation for Polish Science. And today he will tell us something about Ehrenfest theory. So, Professor, the screen is yours. Thank you. So, I am tempted to begin with a short historical introduction. After I say what is the subject, the subject is based on the recent work that we just submitted to one of the journals. And the main message of this work is that relativistic Ehrenfest equations are even simpler than non-relativistic Ehrenfest equations. Sometimes this is called Ehrenfest theorem. However, this is hardly a theorem because this is not a mathematical statement. Well, in the relativistic case, there is an interesting connection between the Maxwell equations and the Ehrenfest equation. On the other hand, the derivations are simpler because one does not need the form of the equation like the Schrodinger equation was used before. Now, neither Klein-Gordon nor Dirac nor Proca equations are needed in their full form. However, certain information about these equations is required. So let me go back to my historical introduction. Paul Ehrenfest was born in Vienna. He committed suicide in Leiden, and I will tell more about this. He was a student of Ludwig Boltzmann, and Boltzmann favored his student. And once he said, in the form of a joke, if only I knew my own works that well, <laughs> one can, of course, realize that when Paul Ehrenfest was Boltzmann's student, Boltzmann already was diagnosed with cancer, and he really was not a good shape. And as a result, as you know, Boltzmann committed suicide. Paul Ehrenfest was known to his contemporary as an exceptionally good speaker. Albert Einstein wrote about Ehrenfest, the best teacher in our profession whom I have never known. Then Arnold Sommerfeld continued, I have hardly ever heard a man speak with such fascination and brilliance. Indeed, Ehrenfest was absolute master of explaining things in a simple way. So let me show the dogs and fleas. And this is something that Krzysztof Pawłowski has a control of. And he will show you, should I do something with my screen or you will just put it on top? Uh oh, you, you are muted, Krzysztof. Okay, so uh, yes, Professor, please stop sharing and then I'll be allowed to. to oh, share. good. I am stopping sharing. So first I have to leave my full screen and then the menu should somewhere appear. Okay. Still, should I do something? Uh, still is shared. You should click on the stop sharing on this red uh, menu. Yes. Mm -hmm. If I if I have the red, it should appear once the mouse will be at the top uh, edge. Of ah, at the top. Okay, you are absolutely correct. It was at the bottom before, and now it's at the top. So now let's try. I will reset this animation for 10 tries. 
So this is an animation that is taken from our popular book, Modeling Reality. The program was written by, by my daughter. And this is how Ehrenfest explained irreversibility. So we start with 10 fleas all together. And you can see that even for 10 fleas, one can hardly get to the initial state, which was all the fleas on one dog. So even for 10, we have here irreversibility in a sense. Now, Pani Krzysztofie, 200. Then we will see also the, yeah. We, what happened to the second portion of this animation? Somehow it doesn't show, but that doesn't matter. You can see now, could you stop animation? I can, um, yes, I can stop the animation. Or start stop from... animation. Ah, stopping is impossible. I can just- uh, No, stop. no, no, stop anim to the, go to the- Animate, right. like an and, antique animates. Uh, yeah, that's right. Mm. Oops. There's some problem. So let me show again. Oh, and oh yes, that's it. Click it. But then yes, now you can see this in fast motion, and you see that we reached equilibrium, even though, according to Poincaré, at some point we should have the initial situation: all fleas on one dog. And this is how Ehrenfest explained the irreversibility of processes in statistical mechanics. Okay, thank you. And that was important, very important, in view of the fact that Boltzmann was criticized by phenomenologists who did not believe that his approach based on microscopic statistical mechanics was correct. So this is one of the proofs that Ehrenfest was absolutely top master when it came to explaining things in simple terms. That is why he was invited to these famous Solvay conferences where big shots were discussing important issues. And he always served as a critic and as a person who could explain all the complicated problems. And that at the end really caused problems for Ehrenfest. He was a very good friend of Albert Einstein. Here you see Paul Ehrenfest and Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. The uh, presentation is not short. If... It's not, ah, well, that's okay. So I should again go to share screen mm -hmm. problem. And now, Where is, where is the share screen mode? It's in this uh, Zoom window. Yeah. Yes. Down on the page there should be such a green. Share screen, a green arrow. I think okay. you have to just wait for. Is, it, is the screen now shared? Uh, yes, not in the full screen mode, but. Yes, I will come to full screen mode in a second to view and etc. View, maybe control. Uh, full screen mode. And we are back in business, I hope. So now you should be able to see Ehrenfest, Einstein and the son, the oldest son of Paul Ehrenfest at, in Leiden at the Ehrenfest home. Well, one, again, historical remark, Ehrenfest had big problems with getting a professor's position. First, he tried it in Austria, but in Austria, they had a law that somebody like 
Ehrenfest could not become a professor he, because he was a proclaimed atheist. And atheists were not allowed to become professor. This is a message to Mr. Mm -hmm. Czarnek. We should introduce a law that only Catholics can become professors in Poland. Next, he tried to get a position in Russia. And this is because his wife, Tatiana, was Russian. And when they got married in Austria, she very much wanted to go back to her homeland. So Ehrenfest arrived in Petersburg. And again, he couldn't get their position. He tried position of a professor in Germany. And he almost did it in Munich. But finally, Sommerfeld decided that he should first offer positions to his students. And Ehrenfest clearly was not his student. But finally, Ehrenfest was invited to fill in a very prestigious position left by Lawrence in Leiden. And then he became professor in Leiden. And most of his active years were spent in Leiden. So the first thing that he did, because he was a student of Boltzmann, when Boltzmann died, Felix Klein, who was the editor of the mathematical encyclopedia, decided that the best person to fill this gap Boltzmann was supposed to write this article, but since he was no longer alive, Ehrenfest decided to write it. And he wrote it with his wife, Tatiana. And this book became a book. First, it was a chapter, a long chapter, almost 100 pages in the encyclopedia. Then it was published as a book. And finally, it was translated into English, and now it's available for something like 50 euros on the internet. So this book really is still important because it explains in very clear terms how macroscopic phenomenological thermodynamics arrives from microscopic considerations. Well, unfortunately, the end was tragic. And Ehrenfest, in his letter to students, wrote just about two years before his death, every new issue of the Zeitschrift für Physik or the Physical Review immerses me in blind panic. My boys, I know absolutely nothing. And this is even more clearly explained in a letter that was not posted, but it was supposed to be his suicidal note. In recent years, it has become even more difficult for me to follow the developments in physics with understanding. After trying ever more enervated and torn, I have finally given up in desperation. And then he got a pistol. He went to a hospital where his son, who suffered from Down syndrome, was. And first he shot his son, and then he shot himself. And one can understand what really was the cause. But because for a brilliant scientist who valued crystal clarity, the vague and mysterious incantations of new quantum theory were totally incomprehensible and unacceptable. Remember, in those days, the situation was not as clearly explained. And now it was full of some unproven assumptions. Remember famous Niels Bohr, who just was uttering some words that very few people understood. And the rest was divided. There was the wave mechanics. There was also the matrix mechanics. And the situation was not clear. So after this historical introduction, let me go back to business. So this is the abstract of the paper written by Ehrenfest in 27, which proves that, after all, he did understand what's going on in wave mechanics. 
it rarely happens that abstract contains all that is in this paper because you can see how this goes on the left hand side you have second derivative of the average value of x and on the right hand side after some transformation using the Schrodinger equation you get the derivative of the potential and of course if as it says clearly here if this wave packet is klein then one can take out as written here the value of the potential at some mean point and obtain the famous Ehrenfest equation. And now what are the ingredients of our contribution to this saga of Ehrenfest equations? Consider a closed system with three elements. Closed system means that there's nothing that can influence. It's just enclosed in some big say enclosure and the relativistic part of the system is a charged particle described by a certain wave equation. It could be Klein Gordon, Dirac, and Proca, or anything else that you can imagine, for example, an equation, relativistic equation for spin two or whatever. Then the second part of the system is the classical electromagnetic field coupled through the Maxwell equations to the electric charge and current of the particle and to some external sources. If there are no external sources, then the electromagnetic field will be rather peculiar because it will only be driven by this quantum particle and you cannot really hold such an electromagnetic field, uh, macroscopic electromagnetic field. So we assume that there are some sources that like power station that make this system such that electromagnetic field can be arranged in an arbitrary shape. So in a closed system, we have the continuity equations for the total energy momentum tensor. This is the basic fact from special theory, theory of relativity. Of course, it has some deep connotations in general relativity, but that will not be of interest to us. And then we proceed remembering this conservation law. So what is the energy momentum tensor of the field? You open any book, Jackson, whatever, and you find that the energy component is d dot e, b dot h. Then there's the momentum. Well, as a devoted teacher, I would like to make a remark. Some people call this pointing vector. That's not true. Pointing vector has a different dimension. Is the energy flux, at, but the dimension of d cross b is momentum per unit volume. So the proper explanation of this symbol is the density of momentum, not the energy flux. Energy flux will appear on the next slide. Then we have the Maxwell stress tensor here, which also will appear next. And then we have Maxwell equations. The Maxwell equations, which I like and love, are written in the modern units. So there are no four pi's. There is nothing here that would bother us. These are just equations that do not contain such external things as one over four pi. So what do we have on the right hand side? We have sources and the source is rho v, which is the source coming from the relativistic particle and these external sources rho e and v. Then we have the Faraday law, which does not have anything on the right hand side. And I remind you that the connection between d and e and b and h is standard one. So now we calculate time derivatives. That's an easy exercise for a student. You just differentiate and use the Maxwell equations. When you somewhat rearrange the terms, you have here t 
two equations for the time derivatives of the components of the energy momentum tensor. Notice now that on the right hand side, now we have E cross H, and this is the energy flux as seen here from the further calculation. Next, I integrate these equations that contain the components of the tensor to have full quantities. So when I integrate the energy density, I get the full energy. And on the right hand side, then we have two terms, the one due to the particle and the one due to the external sources, minus the surface integral, because there's some energy carried by radiation. You cannot avoid when you do something to Maxwell equations that there will be no radiation. If you have sources, they will radiate. And here you have the energy flux, the pointing vector E cross H. Similarly, when you integrate the momentum density, you get the full momentum. On the right hand side, in red, you have the full momentum transmitted, because this comes from the conservation law, transmitted to the quantum particle. And then there's, of course, momentum carried by radiation, which is the surface integral of the Maxwell stress tensor. So now we have, this is the crucial step. We have identified the energy exchange between the electromagnetic field and the momentum exchange between the electromagnetic field and the quantum particle. So let's go further and see how we use it. Therefore, the change of the energy of the particle on the left-hand side of this equation is equal to this integral in red, but with reverted sign. There was a minus sign, now it's a plus sign because the energy lost by the electromagnetic field is gained by the particle. And the same for the momentum, the time derivative of momentum is equal to this integral. And now comes a simple assumption connected with the Ehrenfeld derivation. If this wave packet is very small, and now we can model this by introducing the delta function, then we can do the integrals. And we can pull out, as Ehrenfeld did in his derivation, pull out E cross V and E plus V cross B and obtain two equations. The change of energy of the particle is equal to the scalar product, which is sometimes called joule heating. And then we have the change of momentum. And the change of momentum is, as every student knows, Newton's second law. And the Newton's second law tells you that the force on the right-hand side in this equation is the Lorentz, famous Lorentz force. The electric field at the position of the particle plus velocity of the particle across the magnetic field. As you see, I avoided all concrete calculations, some problems, and the main obstacle here, if I wanted to do it the way Ehrenfest did, was if I started with the position operator in relativistic quantum mechanics, mechanics, that would be a total mess because there is no good definition of position which will be universal. One can ask a position of what? There is a position of the charge. There is the position of the mass, which are not the same thing. In non-relativistic physics, the position of every quantity that you can associate with the particle is the same because it's psi star psi multiplied by some charge or mass or whatever. Here, the situation is completely different. So by, by doing this, I, pass, I bypassed 
the need for the position and I came directly to Newton's second law and the Newton's second law is like it should be. So what is the conclusion of my seminar that relativistic Arrhenfeld equations hold as a result of the energy and the momentum conservation in the exchange of the energy and momentum between the electromagnetic field and the quantum particle. Now there's a nice exercise for students to generalize this to curved space and to see how it's working in the context of uh, general relativity or even not necessarily general relativity, but just take curved space and see whether relativistic wave packets move along geodesic. I am sorry that this Seminar is so short, but one explanation is that I was supposed to fill a gap that occurred and I had no time to prepare a much longer seminar. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, so thank you for this uh, short but interesting talk. And now we have a lot of, uh, ah, yes. <laughs> uh, and now we have time for questions. So you can either directly ask if there will be someone else. Can I ask the question? Yes, sure. Absolutely. Uh, uh, if you look at the first slide with your basic equations. The first slide? Yeah, where, where no, 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 that is, that's uh, your. This one? That's one, right? OK. Uh, oh, well, I mean, these are purely classical equations. I Absolutely. Mean, I can repeat all these calculations never mentioning the word quantum particle. Yes. So, so this is not in that sense a RNFS equation. Yes, it, it is. It has said that if I, I, will, have a I will explain. Yes, yes, I will explain. Oh. I mentioned that rho and V are representing the quantum particle. So yeah, but, that, a... but you never use this other property as uh, the assumption which gave the final result is that the density is a delta function. And that I can also do in a classical theory. Sure, yeah, yes, I agree. So that uh, is a completely- but, so but here in my derivation, rho and V, which is seen here on this slide here, represent the charge and current density of the quantum particle. If you put yeah, but, any other but, but model what, here, you will get the classical sort of. And if they are quantum particles, then the velocity is what? Is an operator. Yeah, no, no, velocity. Okay, is what, is, what is the velocity of a, of a if I don't. Uh, okay, okay. Very simple. Let's talk, for example, about the Dirac equation. Take the wave function of the solution of the Dirac equation, psi. Use this function to construct the current. The current is given by the formula E, the so value of the current, gamma. psi bar, gamma mu psi. Now, psi bar, gamma mu psi is the relativistic current representing this quantum particle. And there is no need for any operators. I'm only talking about uh, wave equation. Like, so, so I, once I have the current, I have the density of this current and I have the space part of this current which is obviously charge density times the velocity vector. But the derivation will continue without any changes if in Absolutely. Of... So I think it's a value of this derivation that I don't have to use the specific form but all h bars etc are hidden in the formula if one wants this formula explicitly written that can easily be done. Uh, for rho and v of the particle. Th these currents, uh, uh, of course, uh, are different for different cases. In the Klein-Gordon equation, the definition of the electric current for the Klein-Gordon particle is different from the definition of the current for the Dirac particle is different for the Proca particle and for anything else you can imagine. And all the difficult part is hidden 
conveniently in this approach that I have rho and v, I don't care where it came from. Of course, uh, th there is this energy momentum tensor, which I have not written explicitly. I would, if I wanted to do it in an explicit fashion, I would have to write down the definition of T mu nu p sub p of the particle. And again, these formulas are quite complicated. They were all, all derived in, in the past. For the klein gordon particle, the form of the energy momentum tensor was derived by Schrödinger. By the way, Schrödinger was one of the authors of the klein gordon equation, but there was no room for additional names. So neither Schrödinger nor Fock appear as founders of the klein gordon equation. And for the Dirac particle, the tensor was evaluated by Tetrode and for the Proca particle by Proca himself. So all these formulas exist and they, they can be written down, but there's no need to do that if one proceeds along the lines that I described. So actually concerning uh, the original Ehrenfest equation, uh, as you have shown, he derived this equation, yes, referring just to the Schrodinger equation. But the other very simple derivation is shown to students is based on Heisenberg equations. Yes, absolutely. And, but this is completely, they, since these approaches are related by a unitary transformation, this is not a different derivation. It's just a different picture, but the essence is the same. So coming to your derivation, it's more like Heisenberg, I would say, because you do not refer to any state at any moment. No, 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 it's not Heisenberg at all, because I never use the notion of an operator in Heisenberg. It's like, for example, the derivation produced in shift in, in the standard shift textbook. It uses the Heisenberg equation with operators and commutators of these operators. So what we do here is not like Heisenberg, it's closer to the Schrodinger approach, because at the Bottom, there is the wave equation. The notion of an operator never is needed. So then, uh, at what limit, I would say, I would see differences from the classical uh, classical equations. Because in a, here in the Ehrenfest theorem, it's very uh, clearly written that uh, the wave packet has to be small. Yes, uh, here the same. If I, well, if I would use Heisenberg, referring back to the Heisenberg picture, <clears throat> it's known that it's working perfectly for uh, for the potential, which is quadratic one or linear one. Ah, then it's exact, surely. Exactly uh, one and then uh, what is the limit of validity here? I'm not the limit of validity, but when the classical quantum correspondence is perfect in, in in your case, it depends. But, on but the case. look, in the original Herenfest derivation, Planck's constant does not appear. So in this sense, this is, and it should not appear because this is supposed to be classical equation, and it is classic. Yes, but we have quantum average of this, let's say, four. So derivative. yes, but quantum average in a way cancels out on both sides if the packet. <laughs> Well, that, that is why H bar does not appear. So coming back to your derivation, uh, when I was- I guess again, if the electromagnetic fields are constant, probably one can go back, go with the average uh, to, uh, to, uh, to rho and V, uh, regardless the size of the wave packet. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, an interesting project here again would be to calculate corrections due to the fact that the wave packet is not a 
point-like object, but it has some moments and to see how these moments influence the equations of motion. But in a certain sense, these corrections are, have been calculated and are being used. Oh yes, some people, yes, yes. I mean, well, they, they, well, are they, used, they are used in the completely different part of physics. Namely, if you want to calculate the partition function for a quantum gas, mm -hmm. and if you go on and you first have the first term, which is the classical contribution, that is the Ehrenfest term, and there is a second part, which is the Kirkwood correction. And that, by the way, is for everyday use in the, in the, in the factory which manufactures fertilizers. Because the, the, the hydrogenizing of the, of the fertilizers is done on such a low temperature that there is a correction in the statistical partition function, which is necessary to calculate correctly the properties of the of the of the gas in the production. And okay. I learned it because as a student I was making some money by doing uh, calculations for this hydrogen chamber at the Puave fertilizer plant when it was being built. And we were doing the calculations on the calculator and there was a coefficient beta which we have been given as a number. And I asked the, the fellow who was giving us this uh, job, what is that coefficient beta? And after a few days, he produced it. And that was a complicated expression. And the first letter in that expression was H bar. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that is basically a contribution to the, to the momentum, uh, average of the momentum in the, in, the, in the calculation of a partition function. Yes, it, you are quite right. And these corrections can be calculated and we could describe them relativistic fertilizer. Yeah, but that is, that I, doubt, I doubt anybody will pay any student any money for that kind of calculation. If there are no more questions, I propose to- uh, I question. Yes, sure. Actually, I, I mean, as I remember correctly, the, his earlier work, so Maxwell uh, equation actually can be written uh, very similar to the Schrodinger equation. So in that sense, uh, the Maxwell equation is already uh, quantum equation. But there is no H bar in the Maxwell education. But the in his representation, the Maxwell equation can be written exactly, almost exactly the Schrodinger equation. So also the amplitude, like amplitude of electromagnetic field, is number uh, number of uh, intensity of a uh, uh, wave. So in that sense, uh, some, in some sense, uh, the uh, Maxwell equation is a kind of a Schrodinger equation. No, no, the, the next approximation would involve some charge distribution. And probably there will be the first moment, the second moment of the charge distribution, which will also introduce some corrections to this Ehrenfest form of the equation, which only takes into account the electric and magnetic field, not their derivatives, which would appear in such a corrected calculation. Maybe my question is not directly in, in this presentation, but uh, when you ignore this source term, so max education can be written. Uh, no, no, I agree that there are corrections that could be calculated, but if you disregard this collection, arguing that the wave packet is very small as compared to the typical length of the electromagnetic field, then the result that I presented is correct.
Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying your calculation is not correct, but I'm just curious about the form of uh, max vacation and the uh, and the Schrodinger equations. As the question goes, uh, I see also beyond the stop. Uh, I propose to stop this. Uh, pardon, maybe I'll answer. Uh, so it's, it's sort of orthogonal. It's sort of an orthogonal question to what has been presented in, in, in Professor Biawinitsky Birula presentation. Indeed, uh, Maxwell equations can be put formally in something that resembles a Schrodinger equation for uh, spin one particle. But of course, the big problem is that what you would take as a um, as a, your uh, uh, wave function, which is composed out of field intensities, is not normalizable. Yes, yeah? it, no, 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 no. You, I object. I have done this many years ago, and there is a perfect substitute for the photon wave function formed from the components of electric and magnetic field and normalization yeah, yeah. It's, works it's the same yet, way it's, it's the yet, standard approach. I agree, but yet I think Taihun's question is, is on a, so to say, simpler level. It's on the level of a formal resemblance of uh, Maxwell equations and, and Schrodinger equation. And then if you simply rewrite what you had as a, as a Maxwell equation somewhere on, on your slides, if you re rewrite it with uh, complex um, field intensities, then it resembles a... Um, yes, I have done it 20 years ago. Yeah, I'm it's talking about that, that yes. part, yeah. Seek in yes, yes, it's under photon wave function and you will see what's well, done. It's in. not the photon wave function, but that's, that's okay. But I think he is asking sort of an orthogonal, uh, orthogonal question, which is not uh, directly related to the Ehrenfest theory. Right. But can, can I ask the one question more? Yes. <laughs> uh, the question is, if I will just take this Dirac definition of, a, of the current, psi bar, gamma, yeah, and psi. Gamma mu psi, yes. And if I will now use the Dirac equation to calculate, if I will write that in the non-relative, I mean, in the in the not then in a gamma form, but with alphas and betas, right? Okay, yes. And if I will write then the usual time derivative of that uh, using a Dirac equation again written in the t and x separately, mm -hmm. what I will get? A very messy. Yeah, but messy. But, um, but that's I mean that has which been, is not. You get an expression which, which is not uh, in the form it's not of the mean value of anything. No, absolutely not. Or a combination of mean values. It has a lot of terms that do not have a simple interpretation. The, the, of course, the current satisfies the continuity equation, but the, the time derivative of the total current is, is complicated and does not give any interesting results, unless somebody shows that it can be done in some other way. Because somehow the, the, the non-relativistic Ehrenfest equation can be also derived from the Maderung representation of- Yes, equation. yes, we have done it in our book. Yes. So uh, the question I'm asking whether the same procedure can be applied in the, for the Dirac equation. Well, the people have tried because the continuity Hydro equation must hold. Yes, sure. Uh, people have tried hydrodynamic form of the Dirac equation and uh, did not produce any useful results. I have tried it myself and I don't think any of interest came out of this effort. It can be done, but there's a lot of objects that you need to introduce in addition to what you started from. In the usual Madelung approach, you have the density, you have derivatives of the density and velocity. But in the Dirac case, you would have many more additional quantities without a clear physical interpretation. But that is only because we usually write the Madelung representation equations in the Euler uh, picture. 
Yes. But if you try to write the oil, if you try to write the Madelung equation in the Lagrange coordinates, <laughs> then you also have a messy term, something which looks like a messy term, but in fact, they are nothing else than the continuity equation. I mean, this, this, this products written in a complicated way. And that can be, so to say, combined backwards. Uh, well, I, but I agree that's not, that's, that's just a, a gimmick. It's, it's, it's not something which brings any new insight in what's gonna happen with this case. So uh, let's thank the speaker again.